Hey guys, this one is just a quick update. Today I was working in the fetal medicine unit, which is so, so, so interesting. So it's essentially where women have their scans. There are consultants around, so if there are any complications, they, these can be raised to the consultants and they can have appointments with them. Consultants can come in to see them and also any other complications to do with the fetus. It all happens in the fetal medicine unit. And today was interesting, but I'm just going to drop you some nuggets of information that I learned today. So I was working with a sonographer, but then I was also working with a midwife at times as well on emergency procedures. So the first emergency procedure was a fetal blood transfusion. The second one was, I don't know the name of it, something about choreo or amnio, something about amnio. But essentially they took amniotic fluid out of the woman. I don't know why. This is anyone I'm not sure about that I need to find out more about. And the last one was laser surgery today was too cool too cool so i learned about the anomaly scan that we always tell women about in community appointments and that scan takes place between 11 to 13 weeks and it's called an anomaly scan because they really look in depth at the baby and see if they can see any malformations for example if they can have t21 which is down syndrome so they look at have down syndrome edwards syndrome and patel syndrome and they take a lot into consideration for this so the woman's age the size of the baby at that um, established in the 11 to 13 weeks is a particular size of the baby that they expect and also the thickness behind the baby's neck they measure that which is known as the nuchal, nuchal measurement I also noticed that the sonographer gave women amazing safety netting, netting advice um, in more depth than I normally hear midwives give it so so the sonographer would ask, would tell the woman from about 28 weeks um, to just look out for baby's movements and if they're not feeling baby moving that they should lay down on their left side or on their side, drink caffeine and have some sugar and see if that helps, if not come in and normally you just hear, don't feel baby moving, come in. And what I notice is that when women keep coming in for reduced feet or movements and everything is fine, they will stop coming when they actually need to come in. The advice she gave the woman was really good. Yeah, I've never heard anyone say if you're unhappy with baby's movements, lay down your left because that's essentially what we would do in the hospital anyway. I also found out a bit about aspirin which is used for women who have the likelihood potential to develop preeclampsia and to develop other things as well but it's given in pregnancy and aspirin really helps and I need to look at the research because apparently there's lots of research on how much aspirin affects prevention of stillbirths. I also learned about the first sign of compromising baby being the abdomen so if the abdomen stops growing or slows down in growth that's a sign that the fetus all oh, there's hailstones outside that's a sign that there's a fetal decline in the growth and that the fetus is compromising um and yeah just trying to ensure that everything that is needed to be supplied to the brain is going to the brain yeah the abdomen will just stop growing so this sounds a bit wishy-washy but yeah i'm learning in it also with a low-lying placenta, because I had a lady who her placenta was literally on the cervix. The, she had a cyclage anyway, but the midwife was like, any signs of bleeding. Like cyclage is where the cervix is stitched um, to prevent it opening up prematurely. But yeah, the midwife was like, any signs of bleeding you need to come in, um, any signs, because the placenta is literally on the cervix and 97% of placentas actually turn. So it's not a huge and major concern anyway. I say not a huge concern because of the gestation she was at in it. She's not anywhere near term or anything, but things happen in it. So any bleeding, she needs to come in. I learned about a heart condition called hyperplastic left heart. And this is basically where the left side of the fetus's heart is not developing. And it's essentially just the aorta. Right now, I think they do terminations because of this, because the baby doesn't have four chambers of the heart. Back in the day, um, they didn't do terminations and there was a 50-50% chance of the baby surviving after being born and having surgery because the surgery would be needed straight away for this condition. There can also be signs of interuterine death in a scan. So a sign of this could be spalding of the head and that means that the back of the head just starts to look very like, like fluid, like wobbly. I don't know how to explain it. The face is clearly seen, but the back of the head looks wobbly. And in that case, two people need to check for the heartbeat. And then also, it's not only just not hearing the heartbeat, you have to check for any signs as well. It's also something called a mis miscarriage, because normal miscarriage, 
occurs with bleeding mis miscarriage is basically when the body actually conceals the pregnancy so there's not bleeding you come to your appointment and then they just can't find the heartbeat okay and the last things the emergency procedures that i saw on my days so i saw a fetal blood transfusion and i don't know if you guys can hear the weather it's a bit mad but yeah the fetal blood transfusion that i saw was literally like they put a needle so they located the um placenta and um so this was um consultants they located the placenta and then they were finding the artery and the vein then they put a needle through and then another needle on that needle and then they connected up the blood that was on a drip to it and it was the midwife doing it the midwife had to pump a certain calculated amount through the needle into the umbilical cord and yeah the doctor gave me the, the opportunity to count so i was counting how much time she had pumped the blood in and she had to do it 10 times to reach the calculated dosage required i don't know why it was because everything was fast paced i don't know the reasons i don't know if it was anemia or what but yeah blood was transferred to the fetus through the cord which is so cool so cool i also saw a procedure where fluid was taken out of the cord and again this was done with a scan and then with needle and a syringe taking the fluid out and then the last one i saw was laser i can't even come explained that one to you but i know it's because there was a tumor in the placenta and that was preventing blood flowing to the fetus so the laser was essentially dissipate is that even a word the tumor but yeah all i know is the fetal medicine unit is very very cool and interesting i learned so much today i hope you've learned something too and found out something new